So, John, we just spoke um, with the, the sort of 3D printing fireside chat, and just during the break we were talking, so you sort of mentioned how this was the perfect marriage between technology and um, development. I'm just sort of, I just sort of want to hear more about that. Right. I, you know, I like to say we're in a cosmic sweet spot um, right now. We have really cool emerging technology, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, motivates uh, and excites the geeks. But we're using it to make children smile and parents weep. Um, so it's hugely rewarding work, even for the geeks and the nerds who, uh, you know, didn't start out that way. They find that the experience of creating you know, with their own little 3D printer, some kind of a mechanical device that will um, really transform a child from the kid who sort of keeps his hand behind his back and is right. sort of uh, embarrassed and is known as the odd kid in the class into a superhero mm -hmm. who is approached by other kids and they say, what's going on? And he says, this is my Iron Man hand, right? This is my superhero hand or my robot hand. Uh, it was made by a volunteer with a 3D printer, and uh, when I bend my wrist, I can make a fist. And the other kid says, you are so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it has a huge effect. So the kids are delighted with these things. Yeah. The parents are hugely delighted, and, you know, it's also a community. So at this point, you've got the geeks, the parents who are meeting other parents, the kids who are have changed relationships with other kids, mm -hmm. and with other members of the Enable community. And meanwhile, we are giving away for free devices that the kids often prefer to much more robust, sophisticated, traditional prosthetics, which can cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah. And so on top of that, there's the fact that we're reaching not just the community of children who don't like wearing traditional prosthetics, but potentially we're beginning to reach millions of children around the yeah. world who don't have any kind of prosthetic, mm -hmm. who actually need them, and in whose cultures actually um, they're in danger of being throwaway kids because mm -hmm. they are imperfect. Whereas here they are empowered, and because we like to tell these kids that they can use their right. 3D printers coming to a library or a school or a village <laughs> near them um, to make hands for other kids, it also leapfrogs them to the cutting edge of emerging technologies in the 21st century technology, uh, 21st century economy. Hmm. So I think it's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, we, we talked a lot about the sort of the, we, we talked a lot about different challenges um, that, you know, the, the, not the organization necessarily, but the industry and sort of tying the, the technology of 3D printing, which sort of, I think, you know, a lot of people sort of think of as a hobbyist toolkit or a, a toy even, um, you know, how do we tie that into, you know, something that actually does have a concrete impact, something that, you know, um, isn't just to look cool or to be a you know five hundred dollar or five thousand uh, dollar device to make yeah. something that looks cool, but how can we actually um, tell that story? Do you see any of those challenges that we talked about, whether it's materials or uh, you know working with the medical community or liability or you know the the durability of the of the devices? I mean, do you see any of those as sort of intractable? Did we come up with something that... No, I see them all as, as difficult, but tractable. Mm. Um, the materials are going to get better, but mm -hmm. right now they're pretty good. These devices will break, but the material is cheap and we can make new ones and we can replace them. Um, liability is a genuine concern. Mm -hmm. We offer these as devices, experimental devices for evaluation purposes, um, we recommend that everyone consult a prosthetist and we disclaim with a document any legal responsibility for these and we don't promise that they're good for anything at all. <laughs> um, hmm. And so far so good, yeah. but as we become a better established organization we're going to have to firm up all of those things. Hmm. We are collaborating with the you said the industry, but in fact there are several relevant industries here. 
Um, there's the 3D printing industry mm -hmm. for whom we've actually created a market for their printers. There's the prosthetics industry for whom we've created, we've identified a new market for new right. kinds of products. Yep. For that matter, there's likely to be the training industry, which will help prosthetists and mm. non-medical practitioners begin to provide real service and real value in alternative ways. Those raise all sorts of economic and legal and uh, educational issues and opportunities. Most of them are great mm. problems to have. Um, I'll point out that our organization, the Enable Community Foundation, um, is trying to organize to support that whole ecosystem and to explore the broader implications of this while at the same time creating a prosthetics youth core mm -hmm. uh, and a enabling technology core that can address these issues for prosthetics and for other opportunities in digital humanitarianism. Mm -hmm. So where do you think we're at to sort of bring it all bring it all home? Are we at the beginning of sort of a 3D printing revolution of, of, of not just, let's not even limit it to that, but, you know, thinking about um, the role that 3D printing can play in this area. Are we at the beginning of it, sort of the middle of it? Is it only going to get uh, stronger and more interesting and we're going to find new and creative ways to use 3D printing <coughs> in ways like this? Sorry. Um, this is, this is really early days. Um, I think it's early days for all aspects of what we've just talked about. The printers have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. um, they require a great deal of care, feeding, maintenance, and tinkering. Um, that used to be true of early computers. Yeah. It's not true of, you know, of, our, of our, the computers we keep in our pockets these days. So it's, it's yeah. that stage of operation. Um, similarly, the methods we're making up what we do as we go along. We've mm -hmm. already, you know, uh, given hands and arms to 700 kids in our first year of existence, but it'll probably be five or ten times that in the next mm. year, and our methods are going to change as required by the increase in scale, as required by the increase in um, responsibility, as required by the new possible materials and the new... Uh, relationships our organization has with other organizations. Mm -hmm. It is really early days. Mm. But exciting early days. It's great. It's great. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. thank you so much uh, you. for the discussion. Pleasure. And, uh, I hope it leads to many, many more. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>